It's time to run some more nets. The runner, criminal, Gabriel Santiago, consummate professional, the corporation, NBN, making news. Let's see what the news is here. So far, no news. All right. Standard opening play, double ice, blocking up the HQ and the R&D. Either gonna need to get through that ice somehow to start using the, uh, get my HQ credits from Gabe. Or I'm gonna need a sneaky door. Well, that's sure gamble. Those credits might hold me over until, uh, I'm able to get in. And I make a run in HQ. He's not Jinteki, I'm not really afraid. It's a TMI. So he's gonna set the trace to see if TMI can stay rezzed. If it does stay rezzed, I'm gonna have a pretty hard time getting in. It's a pretty strong barrier once it's rezzed. He sets the trace at four using his two recurring NBN trace credits. I'm actually okay with that because I'll spend four uh, to beat the trace, de -resing, keeping the DMI derezzed, and if he doesn't try again, um, I get two, and he didn't try again. So I only had to pay two credits to get into that server. And there's a melange, I trash that right away. Awesome. Good move. Now I run R&D, because he spent his credits trying to res TMI. I see a card. It doesn't help me. And pass it back. He just takes a bunch of credits, uh, so that probably so he can res TMI if I try to run again. So again, uh, run R&D. He spends the credits to res the TMI. He sets the trace again at 4 to keep TMI resed. I let TMI stay resed. So he just spent all three of the credits and his two trace credits uh, blocking up R&D. I think I run HQ, right? I should run HQ, because I don't think he can res another TMI. Now that I know what both of the ice are. Yeah, I did run HQ. And Psychographics... Well, I'm not going to get tagged anytime soon, so that's cool. And now, <laughs> I see I had a successful HQ run. I evilly res using the emergency shutdown the TMI he just paid for on R&D so this is pretty rough on his economy he can't I destroyed his melange uh, and I run his TMIs he has to spend money to res the TMIs he has to spend money on the TMI traces you know I run one I keep it derezzed I run the other one he reses it I run the first one when he has no money I derez the one he just paid to res you know, he basically, because it's TMI, uh, if he can get it rezzed, and <laughs> I don't derez it, then, you know, I can't get in. But he just can't get the card up, and he wants, you know, because he tried and failed a couple times, uh, he's got not enough money to bring it back again. And meanwhile, here I go with another sure gamble. So I've been getting money from those runs. Not as much money as I normally would, because I, I have to pay to fight the TMIs. And I got two sure gambles so far. Look at how much you know I've been able to do here uh, without having any installed cards, no programs, no hardware. Right. 
just events and the default abilities. There's a net police. I trashed that, even though I don't think there's even one link in my whole deck. Um, I don't know why I trashed that. I probably should have let him have it. Like, yeah, install your net police. But it still is just one less card for him to install in a remote server to get me worried. It increases the odds that a card in a remote server is an agenda. So I run HQ again because he put a new ice, and it's an Ouroboros. Uh, he had enough money to res it. Pretty much broke his bank on it. The traces on there are really strong. I think they're four, if I'm not mistaken. He uses his, you know, recurring uh, MBN trace credit to bring it up to five. So I can't make another run this turn, which is important because I could have run uh, R&D after he spent all the money resing the Ouroboros. I choose to lose that trace. I'm not going to spend five credits. I have no link. So I can't make any more runs this turn, but I will parasite that Ouroboros. Again, he spent his whole economy on a card, uh, and in just a few turns, that expenditure will, you know, be for naught. So basically, you know, he's, he's flushing a lot of his money down the toilet, spending way too much and getting too little. I install my Desperado. The Parasite begins to do its work. Take that expensive ice away. And the Sneak Door comes out. Perfect timing. And of course, you use Sneak Door as soon as you install it before they have time to ice up the archives. I see the psychographics again. Pass it back. So he's really in a rough place right now. I can get tons of money with my sneak door with plus Desperado. I already have tons of money. He doesn't have any money, and the only ice protecting his central servers really are two TMIs. I run HQ with the sneak door. I get two points. Personal security force. Looking good. Finally find an agenda. Run R&D. He tries to res TMI again. I let him have it. Made him spend some money. It'd be harder for him to res his uh, ice on that remote server. In a couple turns when the Ouroboros is gone, I could probably run HQ again to force him to res that TMI. You think I could just get into HQ with Sneak Door. But, you know, if I go directly, it still forces him to res. Or he can just let me in. Also, you know, just fine by me. Okay, so now he's trying to install cards. I still really, look, I don't have any actual icebreakers. So if he can res that ice over there and it ends the run, he can score agendas behind it right now. I find a red herrings and trash it. That's good. Don't like to see that. And I'm going to use my special order. Now, I was thinking about using special order to go get Crypsis. Uh, cause, you know, I know he has, there's already TMI on the table, and I know he has toll booths for sure, but instead I get the Corroder, right, knowing that there's two TMIs in my way, Corroder is much more efficient, I won't have to spend clicks getting virus counters, and if, you know, I can, I can let the remote server go, if that's not a barrier out there, you know, I'll just keep hitting the centrals, hopefully I'll score enough points to win. 
So I install that corroder and I draw a card. Plays a green level clearance. Now he's starting to get some money. I haven't been making. I've been using the sneak door on the unprotective archives. I haven't really been running any servers with ice. That's given him a few turns to build up a nice pile of cash. And he takes even more cash. Okay. Install my compromised employee. That helps really a ton against uh, NBN because it gives me that credit for fighting traces as well as the credit when he reses ice. I also install a Crescentus if I can, you know, de res a TMI and he keeps, he can res it a bunch. That'll go well with my um, compromised employee. And now that the Uroboros is gone, I break through with the account siphon. See, I got the Corroder. I know it's a TMI. I got an account siphon. I got, I brought out all these weapons all at once. So he does try to res TMI. And he's going to use, I believe, all his credits. Every last done. He's built, he spent all those turns building up an economy. Right? And now, to prevent me from stealing the credits with account siphon, he's going to go full trace uh, trying to res TMI. Right, so the strength is like nine, but he's spending all this on a trace, and all that trace does is keep TMI rezzed. It doesn't actually do anything to me, like even in the run, like Ouroboros would have. So he spends all his credits. There's no point in me uh, using the account siphon ability, right? But I have a corroder, so I'll just break through the TMI and then use the Crescentus to cruelly derez it. So he spent his whole economy to res a card that is now derezzed. And I see a toll booth in his hand. I know if I see an ice played pretty soon, it's probably going to be a toll booth. I don't have a code gate breaker. Okay, so now, even eviler. I use forged activation orders. Now that he has no money, forcing him to try to res TMI or trash it. He doesn't have any money, so he has to trash it. Now you might think, why attack HQ so aggressively? You have the sneak door. Now that, look, the archives and HQ are both 100% de-iced. Right? He would have to install and res at least an ice on each one, a non-barrier ice on each one of those to keep me out. You know, but if I would have just let HQ alone and kept using my sneak door, uh, all he would have had to do is you know, install one ice and res it to give me trouble. So this is sort of like dealing with the trouble ahead of time. There's two open servers. I can go in either way. Really, the pressure is on. Huge gaping holes. Almost impossible for him to cover it up without any economy. Zero credits over there. Okay, so he installs a second card in the remote server, which, you know, he's, and now he takes two credits. I don't know what he can res for two credits. Um, so I keep my HQ runs up, found another red herrings, and trash that. That's good. There's only one red herrings left, probably. Which sometimes is enough on its own to uh, score an agenda, even without any ice in front of the server. So I ran R&D, I paid to break through TMI, I saw a card, it wasn't that interesting. And now I run the remote server. I'll see if he will res, he does not. I access one card, it's a Chilo City Grid. Oh, and it's a Red Herrings, the other one is a Chilo City Grid. So I trashed the third Red Herrings, that is pretty great. Now I don't have to worry about that at all. I know any agenda I see, I'll just be able to take it. Shiloh I wasn't too worried about. It's also too expensive to trash Shiloh City Grid. Now 
Yeah, I'm checking the archives to notice that the three red herrings are in there. I think at this point we're chatting about how bad his situation is. Uh, I kind of feel bad. I've been a little bit evil in this game, but that's just how the cards came out. You know, the de-resing is particularly cruel uh, when everything he has is so expensive. I haven't noticed any cheap ice on his side of the table. And the only, you know, he had a melange for economy, and I blew that up. And if he tried to install and use the melange, I would run it and try to destroy it so fast. So I ran the archives and looked at that card. I'm always going to look at a face down card in archives. So I run HQ, and I finally find an agenda again, a three-point data pool. So now I'm at five. Um, I'm pretty sure he's loaded with three and two-point agendas, not too many one-pointers. Maybe he's breaking news. It's the only one-pointer he's going to have in there. I go again with another Crescentus, de-rezzing the TMI again. Seeing R and D. Yeah, every credit he spends trying to res cards is a credit he's not spending on a trace. He does have quite a few credits now. He could lay down that toll booth and try to res it, right? But think about it, he can only res one toll booth. So if you put it on HQ, I would just start using the sneak door. That would be a completely useless uh, use of toll booth. Plus, he would have to worry about uh, me using the sneak door and then an emergency shutdown <laughs> de resing the toll booth. So, you know, it'd basically be money for nothing. You probably just put that toll booth on that remote server. Now you can score agendas behind it. I see an archive memories. Not too worried about that. And that's game. I ran R&D. He couldn't res or didn't res the TMI. I would have broken through it anyway. And another data pool. That is the worst.